Mr. Bloom, thanks so much for your time. You know, it's chilling to watch that story and to see what Tandi, who we're calling a Tandi, went through. Um, what would you say is the state of public health care in this province, given what you've seen there? Well, unfortunately, this is all too common. Uh, it's not always uh, documented uh, as we've seen today. And we, we also had that terrible case uh, last year at the uh, Tembisa Hospital where a man uh, tweeted uh, the health minister. And as a result, uh, you know, he said he wasn't being fed. And there was an investigation by the health ombudsman that uh, uncovered terrible things. Uh, the point is... Uh, you could do investigations at virtually all our public hospitals and uncover, uh, you know, similar mistreatment. Uh, Chris Harney Baragwad Hospital, in fact, uh, records one of the highest, what they call serious adverse events, um, which need to be recorded. It's sort of related to medical negligence. It means that there's, uh, there's harm to the patient uh, that uh, was not done intentionally, but it happened because uh, things were done that shouldn't have been done. Or, or something that uh, should have was done that shouldn't have been done. So Chris Harney Baraguan has had the third highest uh, number of serious adverse events of all the public hospitals in Gauteng. It is a, a larger hospital. It's our largest hospital, in fact. But it's very chilling to think that uh, last year there were more than 400 serious adverse events, and that's the average for that hospital. So it's unfortunately it's quite common. Uh, and uh, I think that the Gauteng Health Department needs to respond uh, a lot more firstly compassionately and uh, also follow up on, on what the deficiencies were. How could this happen? Uh, the, the Chris Harney Baragwan Burns Unit used to have a very good reputation. They still claim that uh, more than 90% of patients uh, there survive, but I think it's time for a specific investigation to the Burns Unit at the Chris Harney Baragwan Hospital and to this uh, particular case as well. It, it just says to me that there's a whole host of things that have gone wrong uh, from test results that uh, weren't made known, uh, from catching COVID-19 in the hospital itself, um, you know, not getting the proper pain medication. And, and at the end of the day, this was a patient who, who felt neglected and from what we can see was utterly neglected. At the end of the day, uh, she died. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it seems to me, I'm not a medical expert myself, but uh, it seems to me that uh, she could well have survived if she received uh, proper treatment. You know, the uh, health department will, of course, argue that they were dealing with COVID-19, that workers were obviously overworked during that period. So what needs to happen when we see more and more instances like this happen during this pandemic? Because, you know... The pressure is real, right? We're not going to deny that healthcare workers are overworked and they can't show compassion to every single patient. But the reality is that that's what they signed up for. Well, you know, I have to say that uh, events like these uh, also happen, uh, they happened the year before, before we had COVID-19. I think it's too easy to, to, to blame COVID-19 for the general poor state of health care uh, in our public hospitals. And I, I actually think that it starts with taking complaints seriously. I, I think that if the Gauteng Health Department took to each complaint seriously, uh, then we would get to the root of the problems. And, and very often it's, you find out it's not resources. You find out that there's lots of money. It's just been spent badly. There's corruption, and it's a matter of, of poor management. So uh, I really think from top to bottom, we've seen so many scandals in the Gauteng Health Department over the years, from uh, the life is said in many disaster to the PPE contract scandal last year. And uh, if you come down to individual hospitals, you find that they also have their share of, of, of scandals. So I, I really hope that uh, the management issues are, are tackled. And, and let's come to the specific case. I think that the Gauteng Health Department needs to, to answer to each and every one of the identified deficiencies by a patient uh, who is sadly no longer with us. She paid the price of poor care. That's, that's what I can see. Yeah, Mr. Bloom, just before I get to this last question, uh, just uh, turn your camera back on for us because you've just turned it off. But let's talk about recourse for patients, in particular this one, the family. What recourse do they have? And also, how long does it take for this process to drag on? Because that would deter many people from seeking recourse. Well, 
you know, there is a charter of patient rights. And the Charter of Patients' Rights should be on every notice board in every hospital. But uh, if you read this Charter of Patients' Rights, it, it's theoretical. They don't take it seriously. Uh, for instance, every patient has the right to a second opinion. But how many patients do you know in a public hospital who actually get a second opinion? So I, I really think that the complaints process uh, needs to have time limits. They need people need to get a response in, in due time, and it needs to be taken seriously. Uh, very often, I end up taking up complaints, and I, I sometimes put in official uh, question for reply to the MEC for Health, and uh, uh, hopefully get a, a response in that way. But you know, there are there are hundreds, if not thousands, of complaints in our public hospitals. I think each and every one needs to be properly processed and and follow up action. Now, there shouldn't be a cover up. Uh, people shouldn't have to go to a member of the provincial legislature or shouldn't have to go to, to the media. Uh, it really seems to me that um, com addressing complaints properly could lead to a, a great improvement in our public health service. But having said that, I think there are staff shortages, there are equipment shortages, and uh, the, the problems we know so well in our hospitals, and those need to be addressed as well.